Green Hell isn't any old survival game. It truly challenges you. However, 21 updates since leaving early access five years ago, they've laid out some big news about its future. The big news is that Green Hell is no longer getting content updates. It is what is essentially going to be a completed game from here on out. Yeah, and that's one of the coolest things about Green Hell is it spent a year in early access. Then it came out early access, had 21 updates with five years of full support. And while the content updates have ended, they're still going to be doing a bug and technical support for the game. Now, I loved Green Hell. I really enjoyed it. But what do you think about the game? I really enjoyed it, too. I started off playing on the Switch, and it didn't translate well on the Switch for me. But when I started playing with you guys and played it on the PC, it completely turned my opinion around. And it, it's actually a game that I keep going back to and playing more and more. As a matter of fact, I'm playing permadeath mode now, which I have never played permadeath on any other game except Green Hill. And I'm, I'm addicted to playing permadeath in Green Hill because it's that good. Well, it's all about the challenges, right? Green Hell doesn't baby you at all. Like, there are so many ways for you to get hurt, not only from all of the enemies in there, which are tribals, rattlesnakes, Brazilian warriors, spiders, and so on. Like, there is so much going on. Jaguars and scorpions. There's so much to worry about. But also, you have to worry about falling or getting cut uh, badly or being coming too dirty or even actually getting your wounds infected. Like... There's so much to worry about this game, so I applaud you for doing hardcore mode. <laughs> it's actually a lot of fun. I mean, it's terrible to lose everything when you die, but there's something about knowing that if I'm not careful and I don't prepare, that I'm going to lose everything. Because if you aren't careful and you don't prepare in Green Hill, you're going to die. So if if I'm playing permadeath and I don't make sure I'm ready, then I'm I'm just going to go ahead and accept that I'm going to lose everything. Well, you know, talking about all this preparedness, you know, you're able to build bases in Green Hell. That's one of the features I love about Green Hell and kind of hate at the same time, is when I put down a hologram, I'm able to place each individual part and really build up my base as it is. There's elevators, there's tree houses, there's sloped roofs. You can really build up even your crafting areas, you know, smelters and mud mixers and everything. Everything's very much interactable. It's a lot of fun to build. However, the hate relationship comes in with placement. It's kind of hard to place, which is to be expected. Your guy's not going to run around and make sure everything can be placed perfectly. You have to find places to put things. So, like, in my current uh, base, which has 20 hours in it, my animal pen is, like, down the creek, down the shore a little bit to the side. But I have some animals that I can go in and butcher whenever I need some fresh meat, and I can start cooking. Yeah, and you have to build to prepare, but that's the thing about placement is you're on an island. You're trying to survive here. Some accident has happened that stranded you here, so you're not trying to build a city. So while you can build bigger bases and you can build a big established base, it's not meant for you to just stay in one spot all the time you you do need to build a base you de do need to prepare yourself you do need to make sure that you have food and water and medical supplies so that if you go out and explore or go out on an adventure or go out for supplies you can come back and get yourself held back up rest whatever but it's not meant for you to build big massive sprawling cities or big massive bases so you can get yourself in a bind if you pick the wrong place to build by obstructions or the ground being a little bit unlevel and things like that. Yeah, and you're talking about building a base prepare and having to go and explore. And one of the reasons why you're building a base prepare is because you do have to prepare medical supplies, arrows, and so many other things to go out on these expeditions exploring the jungle. Because if you go out unprepared, there are ways to get your own bandages again and to get the stuff to survive, but they're not always consistent. They're not always going to be nearby you. So if you get bit by a rattlesnake and don't have the bandages or the tobacco to treat the wound, you might be running around looking for the you know plant to get the bandages and then looking for the tobacco plant. But during that entire time, a jaguar is stalking you in the leaves, and you don't know it before it jumps out and gashes you, which if you end up um, overpowering it, you now have to get another bandage 
to stop the bleeding and or it can get infected. There are so many reasons why prepping before you leave for your base is important. And even just building a base from the beginning is tough. But skills do play a factor in it, do they not? Yeah, you got to level your skills and there's a skill for just about every action that you can take in the game or every tool. And the higher, the more you use that tool or the more you take that action, the higher that level is. It's kind of a hidden feature, if you ask me, because unless you look for it in the notebook, you're not going to see what level you are and you're not going to see what benefits you gain from that level necessarily because the game doesn't let you know, hey, you reach level two or hey, you reach level three. It just no. slowly mm -hmm. builds up. And you can go in the notebook and check all that and see what benefits you have, but it's kind of a background thing in a way. You still get the benefits, but you may not realize it unless you go check that. And that's one of the other beautiful things about the game is that there's also a sense of discovery. There are things that I have discovered wandering around or finding in the, the world, like medicinal plants and that kind of stuff that you didn't even know about. You're the one that told me about using honey on a bandage was kind of a miracle cure for most diseases. And then we just found out the other day that we can throw rocks to knock down coconuts. But there are other discoveries, like I didn't know where to find the dry rack or even existed. I knew where a smoker was, but you told me there was a dry rack, and lo and behold, I just never stumbled upon it, so my guy never wrote it down in the journal. Yeah, and you know, the whole experience system, you can get some of that with the experience system, but some of those things you have to find, you have to find old camps and abandoned camps and, and even not even camps, just sometimes a fire pit next to the road. And you'll hear a sound of someone writing in a notebook and it's them adding the schematics to your notebook. So you can build that later. You've got what, 20 hours you said in your, in your current play and you don't have the drying rack. And yet, when I started, because I spawned near the camp with a drying rack, I got it within like 10 minutes. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing about Green Hell. We're barely scratching the surface on all the cool things you can do it. But I would have to say, even though the content updates for this game have ended, I still would give this game a 7 out of 10 easily because it is a survival game. I have to inspect my arms, my legs. I have to do medical stuff. I have to prepare. I have to build a base. I have to train and learn things. I have to you know, have so many different resources at hand. And playing with my friends is spectacularly fun. It's very seamless. I never have a lot of issues playing with you guys. So again, I love Green Hell. And if folks want to pick it up, I would highly suggest it because it's still a spectacular game. Oh, I agree. And I think there's a ton of replayability because each situation you get yourself into is going to be a little bit different, depending on where you spawn, depending on what obstacles you run into uh, what kind of base you decide to build it's not always the same it's you're not loading up the game and playing the same thing every time you load in i i mean i know i haven't played hundreds of hours but i'm not bored with it yet and i don't i think there's a very long time of playing just green hell before i would be like all right i need to not play this for a while i need to step away from it because there's so much to do. There's there's so many situations you can get yourself in and out of. And there's so much to learn. Yeah. And while the makers of Green Hell Creepy Jar have stepped away from it, they have stepped away to embrace a new game that they've been developing in the background. And we got to see a beautiful teaser for it just recently. It's called Star Rupture. It's been in the works for a little while. The game takes place in a planet where you've been, you've been sent to by a company to start mining a mineral. I've seen the teaser for this game, and it looks a heck of a lot of fun, Dimension. You start out right away, your guy's running up a, a thing of stairs, deploying a turret, putting ammo into it as it's as you turn around to see it shooting at this huge horde of aliens or monsters or bugs coming at you. And you start shooting back, realizing you're about to get overwhelmed. You go cat across a catwalk. The star does this big pulse, and you see this wall of flame coming at you. And the timer starts going down on your suit. And your character starts running through all of what looks like these pods that are crafting these cool things. And they're running towards an objective. And the, there's, an, there's an intensity to the run. Like, I need to get here before that flame wall hits me. I am not going to live if that hits me. It's just so cool. Like, just how much is actually going on. We actually have a screenshot here where one of the community members pointed out all the stuff that was going on in the UI when they briefly opened it at the very beginning. But 
what do you think of this? Do you think this is a step in the right direction? Oh, yeah. I'm excited to see what they throw at us in this game. Uh, I'm excited to see if there's a story. And again, all of this is based on my knowledge of Green Hill and what what I'm excited to see come from this new game. Is there going to be a story mode and and what's it going to be like? What kind of environmental issues are we going to have on this new planet? What enemies are we going to be facing? And what are we going to have to learn to do? Because this is going to be a little bit more than learning what kind of somewhat real world uh, remedies will help us ease cuts. We're going to be on a separate planet and have to figure out what of these plants or what of these uh, synthetic materials that we can synthesize will help us survive on this planet. Well, folks, this is our end game review of Green Hell. But don't worry, folks, I'm sure we'll cover Green Hell more in the future because, like we said, the game has plenty more to offer. I hope you folks have enjoyed our conversation. And don't forget to click down the link to mention 119's Twitch link and check him out. Also, join me in thanking our producer, Red Falcon, for always being in the background, making sure we keep on time and the talk is limited. Thank you for watching Say Survival Podcast. Top for now. See you in another dimension.